So you're all welcome to this short webinar. I'm basically going to be talking about how you can get the right leads with SEO. Um, I'm sure I'm talking to a group of um, business people or um, founders, people who are kind of just getting started with digital or you could even be running your own business. I believe that um, you're definitely gonna learn something from this whole session. And um, yeah, if you're not hearing me at any point or there's any problem with the connection, just kindly let me know and I'll definitely go over. Um, I think it's, a quite, it's quite a short presentation. And right after that, we'll be able to ask questions. And if there's like to contribute as well, feel free. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so let me start about me. So my name is Kekeli Bakna. Um, I'm an SEO expert, and I, I basically help people get the right leads, all right? But it didn't always start like this. It didn't just start out like this. Um, it started with generally a passion for digital. I just loved anything digital and um, always wanted to contribute to uh, digital. I believed a lot in digital and I, 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 I instantly knew that this is going to be the future. And um, that's when I started doing a little research and I learned how to build my first websites. So that was HTML, PHP, CSS, learned to put all that together and to create my website, first ever website. And I started doing that for a, a number of clients that I had at that time. This was when I was in the university back in school. But as I was doing that, some of the clients came back to me and said, um, yeah, I've given them a white elephant. I was like, what, what do you mean? The website is there, but they are not getting anything from the website. And I was like, okay, I'll look into it. So that's when I started doing some research into marketing to find out how I can actually get people to come to the pe my clients' websites. Because yeah, even though I was just contracted to build it, I felt responsible in a way that nobody is coming to the website. Something had to be done. So I went ahead, did my research, started looking into marketing methods, and I chanced upon... So SEO just came natural to me. It made so much sense because, I mean, thinking about it, this was one of the best ways to get people to come to your website without you having to spend. Because at that time, I think Facebook ads were the thing at that time. I was telling them that they don't need to advertise, they don't need to put money into Facebook. And I was in dollars. And I was like, no, that's a lot of them were not ready to pay for that, you know? So SEO just came natural to me. And I've been doing this for the past 10 years, for the past. Um, about SEO. And that means that. There's a, it's a very broad area. And in this presentation, I'm, I think I'm just gonna touch on a few things just so that uh, we can get started, just to get the ball rolling for most of us, okay? So right now what I do is that with my agency, we help brands to make money by getting them the right leads, not just any leads, the right leads, okay? Great, so what is SEO? SEO simply stands for search engine optimization. It's a simple process of, okay, not simple, but then it's a process of getting a website ready and making it easily available on search engines when people are searching for, um, key, for specific keywords. Okay, I think HubSpot puts it very nice in their definition. They say, the process of maximizing the number of visitors to a particular website by ensuring that the site appears high on the list of results returned by the search engine. So it's the whole goal of SEO is to be the first or to be on top when it comes to um, searches because there are so many searches that go on every single day and it's important that you stand out from the rest, all right? And the good thing is that every site can benefit from this. 
It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what your site is about. Every single website on this planet can benefit from SEO. All right. And one of the main should focus a lot on SEO if you run a business. SEO should be one of your main strategies because SEO brings you organic traffic. Now, organic traffic are people who are finding you organically. They are they are people who are just running searches. Like, for example, if you are looking for a place, you want to search in Google. Google Maps comes up, you see the location, and then you go ahead and click to it. And these are these people, these organic leads are the best leads you can ever think about because these people are already interested in you. All right. They are already looking for your product. It's, it's like, ah, perfect. Like this is exactly what I was looking for. And that's the job of search engines. They try and give people what they are looking for. So SEO works a lot with search engines. And of course, SEO is a marketing strategy. And in any business, I think right after salaries, the, one of the major expenses is normally marketing. Because marketing is expensive. I mean, it's, it's expensive even with the traditional, which is known as out, outbound marketing what we see every day in the forms of flyers, posters, banners, and putting things out. It's, it's called outbound because you are putting it out and you're just hoping that people see it or you're trying to put it in a very congested place where you believe that a lot pass by and a lot of them will see it and hopefully they'll go ahead and tell their friends, et cetera, et cetera. And these are very good marketing methods but they are also limited in many ways, all right? Because first of all, it's not predictable. You are not able to really measure the kind of impact that you are making with these methods. Even though they can be effective for certain campaigns, the, the lack of um, measurability with these ads um, can go a long way to hurt you as a small business, especially because you wouldn't want to be spending money where you can't account for the money. You must always have a return on your investment. If you're putting money in, I should be seeing the results of the money that I'm putting in. You get it? So marketing is expensive. And if you target wrongly, you know that you are, you are, you, you've already missed. Okay. You start getting terrible leads. And in the end, you realize that, wow, I, I've just wasted a bunch of money and I've got no results out of it. So I always advise this to any business that if you are going to do business or if you are going to run marketing, you should definitely consider SEO because SEO is an inbound marketing method. All right. Inbound meaning that it's the client that is coming to you instead of you shouting out and hoping that a client will come from your. These people that are coming to you are already in need of your service, all right? I don't think anybody would get up and type um, something like food near me if they are not hungry, you get it? Most people who do these things are ready to make a payment. They are looking for food. If your website provides them the food, that's it, you've made a sale and you didn't need to spend a lot of money to get in front of these people. They actually came to find you. All right, so that's the whole idea of SEO and the inbound marketing strategy. And as I said, it meets the searcher intent. The reason why the searcher is searching. Okay, if I'm looking for, um, let's say for example, I'm, I'm just looking for maybe a painter, painters in, of course, I'm, it's, my intent is very clear. I need a painter, <laughs> you get it? So. What are the results? What's the search engine going to show me? A search engine like Google. I use Google a lot because Google is the biggest search engine um, around. It has over 90% of the market. So it's one of the biggest. And every single one of us uses Google, I'm sure. And you know that naturally, um, you, you get a lot of, you, you can easily see the search intent from the way the person is searching. 
if I'm looking for a painter, I need a painter in Accra. I can even be more specific. Painter in North Legon or East Legon. That's more specific. So the searcher intent is clear. And once you know that searcher intent, you can actually prepare a landing page for that searcher. So as soon as that person searches, there's a high probability that they land on your page and they go ahead and convert. And converting here means that they've actually contacted you and they've gone ahead to uh, request your service or your product. And SEO has some of the best conversion rates out there because we know the searcher intent. We are not just shouting out and hoping somebody will come. We are getting to people who are very, very interested and who need your service, all right? And of course, everyone uses SEO. As long as people have a mobile phone, they are always searching every single day. I'm sure today some of you have already searched for certain things online. And you know, the, the searches vary. You know, it's reported that Google receives about 600 and sorry, 63,000 searches per second. As we've started this webinar, millions of people are already searching. Mm -hmm. And all these searches, a lot of them could be your potential. Um, clients, all right? Now, how do you use SEO for your business? Um, th that's why I want to center on in this whole presentation. Now, first of all, you need to understand your customer, all right? In whatever business you are, you are in, you have a very specific type of customer, your customer profile, you know? There are certain things that um, a customer who is looking for a type of food or a customer who is looking for a spa to attend would look for. You need to really understand what they look for online. Okay, so for example, I, I like using cakes a lot. I don't know why, but if you run a cake business, right? Um, how, how do you think your customers will be searching for you? Of course, they, would, they, they can search, um, they can do very direct product searches like red velvet cake in Accra or buy red velvet cake in Accra, or surprise birthday cakes for, for my husband or my wife or something, or my child, or two-year-old birthday cake. You get it? These are all variations. These are all ways that people can search. And when you go into keyword research, we'll talk about that very soon. When you go research, you get to see how or how many times people are actually searching for particular keywords. And with that information, you are able to craft your website in a way that you get, um, you attract these people and then you'll be able to even convert these people to your, um, to, into sales, okay? So know you also know about your product, right? Is your product or service searchable? In fact, every product and service is searchable, all right? It's just that they vary in volumes. There are some things that are more searched for than other things. So you must you know that every time people are searching for maybe the latest iPhone, where to buy iPhone or where to fix iPhone. Maybe your, your business is that you fix iPhones. People always type things out, um, broken screen, how to fix a broken iPhone screen. It's a keyword. And if you um, work on your SEO right, you'll be able to attract all these people which lead directly to sales, okay? Yeah, so let's talk about keywords. This is how people get along in search engines, all right? And keywords can be broken down into four main areas. The informational keywords, so these are keywords that people are searching for to write. The intent of the keyword is informational. They want to get information. You get it? It could be someone who might be doing his homework. Maybe he's, how do volcanoes work? It's an informational keyword. He needs information. So you realize that with informational keywords, you are able to draw lots of traffic to your website. So let's use the cake, for example, right? So if you are selling cakes, for example, what are the things that people look for in relation to cakes? All right, now you must look at two different, you, you realize that you might have even have different audiences, people who need to buy cakes and there are people who need to learn how to make cakes. 
if you give if you um, offer that service of teaching people how to make cakes um, most of the time people would search how to make a red velvet cake how to make a cake with so so and so ingredients content around that once you create content around that you are given those are informational keywords and these informational keywords bring you tons of traffic that you can um, definitely work with because they have some interest in your product okay but there are also the transactional keywords okay transactional keywords are keywords that people are searching for to to buy all right like for example if i need to buy a laptop buy a laptop in ghana or buy a laptop in accra it's a clear transactional keyword i'm looking to buy so instantly you should be able to um, have a landing page that when people come, they can easily transact. When people come on the website, they can easily contact you and get more information and turn that into a sale. Okay, they are also the navigational on specific places. Um, there are times that you might be looking for. Um, it is not a wise thing to try and outrank for navigational keyword. Right. So for a navigational keyword, um, let's say, for example, um, my business is a, a hotel. All right. I have a name for the hotel. OK, I have a name for the hotel. And if my competitor wants to rank for that name, let's say my hotel is called right. It will not be wise for a competitor to try and rank for Alisa Hotel because it makes no sense. People are looking for Alisa Hotel because I want to go to Alisa Hotel. So for navigational keywords, they are very specific and um, it's not a wise thing to try and rank for navigational keywords, all right? We also have the commercial keywords. These have, um, uh, how should I say? These have um, the potential for sales, all right? So these are things that people are looking for, maybe reviews, they want to, find out this phone, iPhone, which one is better? Um, a specific brand to a, another specific brand. You're just comparing this and that. You're just putting all of them together to find out more information. And these are very good people that you can definitely attract to your site. And once you attract these people, eventually you can turn them into sales, okay? Great, so for example, right, this is just um, I don't think it's showing fully, okay. But generally this is a search for um, laptops for sale in Accra, right? Or in Ghana, laptops for sale in Ghana. You can see that the information over here is that there are about 170 searches for that particular keyword, laptops for sale, all right? And the keyword difficulty is showing you, um, this is taken from a software called SEMrush, but there are various tools that help with the um, keyword research. Tools like SEMrush, HREC, Moz, there are various um, types of tools that you can use. Um, but in this case, I'm using SEMrush, right? It shows you a keyword difficulty, how easy meaning how common. Some keywords are much harder to rank for than others. You get it. And even with the keywords, they are different, um, there are different types. All right. We have the long tail keywords and the short tail keywords. So if you want to rank for something like, for example, cakes. Right, you want to rank for cakes, which is a short tail keyword. It's only one word. A short tail keyword is one or two words. Now, if you want to rank for something as short as cakes, when someone types cakes, they should immediately show you. It's difficult because we don't really know the searcher intent when someone is typing cakes. What do you mean by cakes? Do you want to buy cakes? Do you want to know how to do cakes? Do you want pictures of cakes? Like, it's very difficult to determine the searcher intent just from one keyword but if you tell keyword which is three or more words like for example cakes uh, maybe fresh cakes near in accra it gives you a clear idea of the person's intent the person is looking for fresh cakes in accra 
So what can I give that person? So these are some of the ways that search engines use to um, rank certain websites, okay, based on the type of keywords. And um, from this example, you can see that the trend, if you can see the trend area, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm just hovering over the trend area. You would see that it's trending throughout the whole year, basically. It's, it's kind of an evergreen keyword. Almost every single day of the year or every single month of the year, people are searching for laptops for sale. So if you sell laptops, you realize that you should be ranking for it, all right? And I actually ran this search just a few minutes ago before I came into this meeting. And laptops for sale in Ghana. What company are we seeing there? Compu Ghana. Because um, apparently they've definitely um, understood SEO and they've put a little bit of SEO into their website to make sure that they are ranking for these kind of um, keywords. But the beautiful thing about SEO is that it's not limited to big companies. Some of you might be looking at this and say, oh, it's Kung Fu Ghana. There's no way to rank this company. No, no, no. It's, it really doesn't matter, honestly. There's the website authority and all that. But if you really put in the, the efforts with SEO, within three to six months, you can find yourself coming on the first page of Google, all right, which obviously would be bringing you more and more clicks. The higher you rank, the more clicks you attract as simple as that. So it really doesn't matter the size of your business. You can actually rank and get the kind of leads that you are looking for with SEO. And SEO gives you an opportunity to um, battle with the big boys, let me say, because there are some things you think, oh, it's only the big companies, but no, with SEO, it's a level playing field. All you need to do is to work on your website. There are lots of big companies in Ghana, especially, that's do little or no SEO. And they've seen that a lot of their revenue is dwindling because there are other people that are out there. As I said earlier, there are millions of searches every single day. Things have changed. <laughs> not everybody goes to your office to go and buy things. So if you are not ranking over here, where most of the, the, the sales are happening, it's going to be a problem for you in the long run. Okay, so just to give you that. And um, yeah, in conclusion, concluding, I just want to give you an example of a business that used SEO excellently. I happen to be involved in this business as well from the very beginning. And it's getrooms.co, all right? Now, what getrooms.co does is that it's a website that makes it easy for um, students to find rooms or hostels around their campuses. So whether they are um, in Accra or Kumase or wherever, KNUSC, Legon, UPSA, once they need a, a hostel, they'll be able to um, get in contact with the hostel manager directly from the Get Rooms website, okay? So I started this with um, my, my wife now, but she wasn't my wife back then when we started. I started this when I was back in school because yeah, it was a problem for me. I went to KNUSD, shout outs to any KNUSD people out there. But in KNUSD, after the first year, you realize that it's difficult, you, you need to move out. I don't know if they've changed it. First year you're on campus, from second year going, you have to move out. And most of us didn't really know um, the, a lot of hostels. So it's either hearsay, word of mouth, and all that. You walk to the hostel rooms and you realize that not there, and it was so much stress. So I realized that, okay, let's create something and make it easy for people to find these hostels and get their information. So one morning I, I got up, went around all the hostels in the EGRC, uh, Kote area, took pictures, came to profile all of them, put them all up on the website. And yeah, that was it. <laughs> the Get Rooms was born. Because the problem was marketing. How will I be able to market? Because KNUSD had about 60,000 students at that time. But how can I reach these 60,000 students? I'll need a lot of money to pump into marketing because I, I know for campus like this, most of the time, 
the the main form of marketing guys and posters and it cost a lot i didn't have any money to do any of that so i had to start thinking outside the box and see how i'll be able to to do that and i really considered seo because it made a lot of sense because people are always asking people are always searching but then i had to just try it out to to see whether it will actually work and when i did it's 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 <laughs> It, it more than worked because I realized that the website, I even had to upgrade the website because the level of traffic that was coming to the website was crazy because uh, there's, there was nothing. There was basically nothing that helped people to find hostels online. So this was the first time. It brought many, many thousands of people to the website every single day and with that, we're in the first uh, 12 months, right? We're able to reach over 10,000 students, not only in KNUST, but then we added a few other hostels from other universities. And we saw that, wow, this is, um, this is very, very big. Other hostels in other, um, sorry, other students from other universities were coming on the website. They were all getting signed up. They were all using the that we're all using it to get information from the, the hostel managers, et cetera. And if you can see in this bar chart over here, for organic search, we most of this how uh, we acquired traffic for the website, right? Organic search was through the roof, almost 10K a month for organic search. Direct, it was followed by direct. That's nearly 4,000 people who come directly. So maybe... These are people that have already been to the website. They were mostly acquired. <clears throat> sorry, they were mostly acquired through SEO. You get it. And at the very bottom, you can see paid search. So I tried a paid campaign. I spent $50 and I barely got 100 people come to the website. You get it. So it showed that for my market, this was exactly what was needed and this was exactly what was working. And there are countless examples. There are so many other businesses that we've worked with that um, they found that unique blend of SEO and their um, sales. SEO, as, as they continue to work on their SEO, they continue to see a great increase in their sales, okay? So yeah, SEO works, okay? If it didn't, I wouldn't be wasting my time and talking to you about all this. It actually works and you'd actually be able to get very, very tangible results if you put the work into it, all right? Now, there are different ways to um, go about SEO. I think I already a few things with you earlier, how do you need to know your audience, know your product, do people search for your product? Do that initial research, okay? I think for you guys that are joining this webinar, I think you can reach out to me. I would definitely help you with that initial research for free, just to give you an idea of what uh, you'll be able to achieve if you put SEO to work, okay? But then think about it holistically for your business. If people were coming to your business naturally and you didn't have to spend money on marketing, how beneficial would that be to you as a business owner? You know, recently there was this client that sells Play-Doh. I don't know if you know Play-Doh, but it's kind of a clay-like material that kids used to play. And she was one of the only people in Ghana that sell it. I was like, you need a website. Get a website. Let's work on the SEO and you'd be getting orders. And truly, it, it didn't even take up to two months. When everything was set up, within two months, she started receiving calls. Hello, do you sell Play-Doh? This, 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 this. Everything just started working because when you search for it, there's nobody. Nobody had even taken advantage of it. Probably the people that are doing it have, haven't taken advantage of SEO. You get it. So if you analyze your market very well and look at what you're selling, you'd be able to really dominate your market if you start early or if you, you put in the work that is necessary. Okay. Um, so... I have a book actually on this whole topic about SEO. For those who want to get started in SEO, it's called Let's Talk SEO. Um, it's a book I really put together to help beginners. So 
who are getting started and want to really understand what, how this whole SEO thing works, I think this book would be very, very beneficial to you. So you can go to kekelibakner.com slash learn. You'd see all the details there. I think it's just 30 Ghana CDs. I made it very, very free because the whole idea is not to make money, it's to share knowledge and make it easily accessible to everybody. All right. So I think that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you all so much. I hope you've picked up something from um, everything I've said. If you need to get in touch with me, you can always reach out to me via my website. Um, just send a message. I'll definitely uh, reply and get back to you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if the the host or the panelist has anything to say or how it is will we have time for questions? Will we be able to one might have a question? Okay, great. So if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, yes. So if, if you want to ask a question, uh, you can raise your hand uh, or you can just unmute and uh, go ahead to ask your question. Yes, well, I think this is a question from my side. Um, and I am asking if um, you can recommend some open source um, SEO tools that, uh, uh, that would be good for beginners. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, there are a few open. Okay, well, I, I would just say there are so open source tools because SEO is a process. Um, keyword research is just one of the processes, All right? So there are a few tools that you can use for keyword research. Um, some of them are great. Um, keyword IO, I think that's a great tool. And um, SEMrush. Okay, I've just seen a question. Here. Is SEMrush free? No, SEMrush is not free, but then there are um, group buys that you can take advantage of that would make it very much less. I think it's about $100 from the SEMrush website, but through some of the group buys, you'll be able to get it for like $5 a month or $3 a month or so. And I think it's very, very useful. Um, it's going to give you very good insights in um, your market and how people are actually searching for your products. Okay, so yeah, SEMrush is there. Hrefs is another great tool, but it's also paid, unfortunately. Um, I think in the markets, a lot of them are paid, but one of the free ones you can use would be Google um, in Google Ads. In Google Ads, they have a whole keyword research tool. So once you have a Google Ads account, you can navigate to the keywords research area. And with that, you'll be able to um, get a very good, I mean, a general mm -hmm. idea of some of the keyword volumes. Yeah. I hope that answers it. <laughs> hand the worry, I'm sorry. All right, I think there's another question. Is it possible to integrate WordPress SEO plugins into a HTML website? Um, a WordPress SEO plugin into an HTML website. Well, if they have an API, you can definitely work on it, but um, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult unless you really understand how WordPress plugins are built, unless you are a developer yourself. Uh, yeah, it, it might, it's possible, but it's just a bit more difficult. But if you are using WordPress, that's straightforward. Um, there are great plugins for SEO that help with SEO. Um, I, I personally use Rank Math. It's a great plugin that um, serves as a very good guide and also helps do 
most of the preliminary SEO work for you. So you, you'd save a lot more time when you're doing your work. Okay. Um, that's another question here. Please, what's, please, what's, okay, how does SEO for videos work on TikTok or Instagram? Okay, so those will be under organic social, right? Um, for TikTok and Instagram, they are not platforms that people, um, you know, <laughs> recently a client was telling me that, hey, right now everybody is doing search on TikTok. I was like, yeah, they are doing searches on TikTok, but of course you will not be able to get the kind of answers you get from Google, right? Because you are limited to only videos. But with Google, you are open to um, a variety of, of results. Okay, so, but generally for TikTok and Instagram, they have their own algorithm. They have their own methods and ways of doing things. Uh, what I've noticed that is that recently they are very, very centered on profits. So I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if it's just me, but the last time I was on Facebook, I don't remember seeing any posts from any of the pages I follow because they want um, all these accounts to start paying for ads to uh, you know push them forward and all those things. So um, organic on these platforms, they try as much as possible to reduce it and get people to pay. But then you can definitely take advantage of hashtags and take advantage of trending topics. So those are things that they would naturally promote on these kind of platforms just to get more engagement, more views, and to keep people on their platform. So um, yeah, everybody has their own bias. And Google also has their own bias. A lot of people have attacked Google for the way it um, shoots up certain kinds of, um, <laughs> of results. But I think that's for another discussion. But yeah, Instagram and TikTok, um, they have their own algorithm. So you need to really understand the network and how they function, all right? Okay, so another question from Vivian. Hi, I wanted to know if you can embed a landing page into Google Analytics. Um, Google Analytics is an analytics tool. So you can't really embed, Google Analytics basically just shows you results of what is happening on a website. So you can't embed a landing page onto Google Analytics but you can embed Google Analytics onto a landing page just so that you see how many people are coming to the page, where they are coming from, and the people that are converting on the page, et cetera. And with all that data, you'll be able to build audiences. So you can build on audiences of people that have been active over the past seven days from Google Analytics and you know, uh, remarket to these people or create a campaign for these people. And whichever way, um, I'm sure you notice it a lot, like with sites like Jumia, when you go to Jumia and you log off Jumia, you're on other websites, you keep seeing Jumia, Jumia, Jumia products. The product you are looking at keeps coming at your face because they, once you've already engaged with them, there's a high probability that, okay, you just click through and go ahead and buy it. So all that is being integrated with Google Analytics so that it gives you a very, um, good insight of your audience <clears throat> and yeah, how you can take advantage of the audience basically. All right, another question, follow question. Can you recommend any open source or free SEO API for HTML websites? Um, huh, for HTML websites, well, I would, <laughs> for, there, there isn't any that comes currently because for those kind of websites I normally work on it myself so I know what and what needs to be worked on when it comes to the website but um, to have an API for a basic HTML websites um, I wouldn't know of one off head right now but um, something like that you can definitely if you have a website that really needs that done you can definitely have a discussion with me and we can look into it together um, for well, most of my clients, I'd, I'd always recommend if you can change your site to a WordPress site, please. 
the reason being that it's easier to maintain. Because with some of these HTML sites, I've heard many, many stories. Um, they are calling the developer, he's not minding them and all those issues. So if you can use WordPress, which is kind of like an easy drag and drop builder, get a good theme that you can use. Um, any developer can basically work with it and it makes your work much easier. It also has a lot of SEO um, already built into it. So WordPress alone, uh, I mean, just on its own, that's a lot of the heavy lifting for you when it comes to SEO. But for an HTML site, if you need to do everything from scratch, you need to do everything from scratch. It, it's, it will not be so possible for you to um, get a plugin that would be able to make it easy for you. Yeah, so um, I no, nothing comes to mind right now, but <laughs> maybe when something does, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I hope I didn't miss any question. But, yeah, I think those were all the questions. If there's any other, please feel free to ask. All right, great. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure having this. And, you know, as I said, you can always reach out to me so we can discuss further.